Question four. Freddie hits a cricket ball. Okay, we're given the initial speed and the angle. Um, greatest height. Now, there is a formula for this. And it's in the green book. And it gives it as that. U squared sine squared theta over 2g. Can I suggest that you do not spend some of your brain capacity learning that formula and the associated formula which gives you the range in terms of u in theta and g. The reason is that it's extremely unlikely that they will give you a question where you can simply invoke that formula or recall and use that formula. They'll give you a show that. It will either be show that this formula is true Sometimes they might actually get you to just to derive that formula. That's in the uh, a worked example in the form in the textbook, um, or the range formula. Or they'll give you the answer to part one here, find the greatest height, whatever that number is, and say show that the greatest height is bam. Um, in which case you can't just use this formula. Okay, you have to start from scratch. So don't even bother with it. We do it the old-fashioned way. We split the initial velocity into its components, 25 cos 50 and 25 sine 50, and then we set up a SUVAT. Okay, come back to S. U uh, is the components we just found. V doesn't change for the X, uh, X component, but at the greatest height, just like in a previous question, the velocity will be zero in the y direction um, at the highest point. That defines the highest point, unless it's a point of inflection. But it's unlikely that your ball is going to go up like this and then curl and go up further. It's a maximum, so velocity zero, fine. Acceleration is as normal. S we want to know. Now remember, there is no, in 2D, there's no SUVAP equation that just links S, U, V and A. You have to go via T. So we need to know what T is. So keep it simple to begin with, V equals U plus A, T. Uh, we're only, do you remember in the previous question, the X component, when we substituted into this equation, gave us absolutely nothing. It just said 11 equals 11, which we already knew. Well, that's going to happen again here. You're going to get 25 cos 50. 25 cos 50 equals 25 cos 50 uh, plus 0 times t, which gives us nothing. So just look at the y components. So 0 for v, that's there, uh, equals 25 sine 50, so that's our u. a is minus 9.8 and t is t. Rearrange, you get t is 1.954 seconds. So that's how long it takes to get to the highest point. Okay, now we know t, we can use our old friend s equals ut plus half at squared. Remember my tip to, to use both components here. You often need the other one later on. So substitute everything in there, including a new t. And calculate the top and the bottom rows, you get these values here, 31.4 and 18.7 metres. So the answer to the question, what's the greatest height? 18.7 metres. OK, part two, we're given, it's a bit of a weird question this, I don't like it, I think it's ill thought out. The pavilion's 50 metres away and Freddie is 10 metres high. Will the ball clear the front of the pavilion, I think it should say? Because we don't, it gives us no information about the depth of the pavilion. How, you know, it could be a, a mile long, um, it, or it could be one centimeter deep. You, you know, we don't know. So I'm going to draw. I'm going to think of that as just being a line. So what I want us to think about instead is in this question, basically, if you walk 50 meters away from the starting point, how high above you? is the ball when it passes over you. If it's less than 10, no, it doesn't clear the pavilion. If it's more than 10, yes, it does clear the pavilion. So x is 50, find y.
Now, you could do this, but I think the question's designed probably to do this by, um, to encourage you to find the Cartesian equation of the curve, because then you could substitute in x equals 50 and get your y explicitly from that. But it's slightly less work to just start with the numbers. It doesn't ask us to find the Cartesian equation, so you don't need to work it out. OK, clear some space. Um, as we always do, we do SUVAT. Now we know that the x component of our point is 50, but we don't know the y, co y component, so just call it y. u is as before. v, I don't care. Uh, gravity is the same. t. <coughs> now, we want... If you look at the information we've got there, for the x components we've got s, u and a, which is enough to work out either v or t. Um, for the y components we've got, we don't know that one, we've just got u and a, which so you, two, or two of these is never enough to do anything. So the x components are going to give us 50. We're going to use the s, the u, and the a. And if we use those to work out t, we can then go back to the y components and stick them in to work out um, this missing value here. But rather than splitting up the components, we just operate always in vectors, always do both components at the same time. Quite often, time is the one that you have to go via. If you can't go directly to something, work out time, which ties together, in a sense, the two components. Substitute in. OK, split into two equations, top one and bottom one. OK, you'll see that the first of those two equations 50 equals 25t cos 50, rearranges immediately to give t, which comes out to be 3.11 seconds. If we substitute that in for the y, we're done. And I've written yes, because that's the answer to the question, will the ball clear the pavilion? Um, and we just needed it to be greater than 10, and it is. So yeah.